Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm Greg. Welcome back to the project. The VTOL UAV project. Making good project on the construction of the airframe. In today's video, I'm going to go through the process of designing and building the airframe itself. But before I get to that, I wanted to go through a few of the missteps I've made or actually things I've learned. Um, for example, I was excited and bought my Speedy B controller for my RDO, RDO pilot, RDO plane. And so I bought kind of the high end, high performance controller. This one is the uh, F7 V3. It's got the F722 um, microprocessor. Well, it turns out that processor is quite powerful, but it doesn't have enough flash on board to run RDO pilot. So this is no good. So I bought another Speedy B wing, which has the 405 processor, which is not as powerful, but it's got more flash. So not sure I wanted what to do with this. If you need one of these, let me know. Um, another thing I did was my radio is an, e, uh, an Express ELRS radio, and um, some of the receivers I purchased don't work with my radio. They are made by Radio Master, but that doesn't mean they're compatible with my radio. You need the 4-in-1 variant of my radio to work with some of these other receivers. So I've got a few extra receivers. Um, the third thing that I learned um, had to do with cutting foam, particularly on the wing. I bought some styrofoam, as I probably showed you in the past, and then I, using my bow foam cutter, I cut some wings, um, and this foam is just too thin and lightweight uh, for the wings. You could practically see through this foam. So that was pretty much a fail. So I went to a different type of foam, a denser foam, and so far I've had much better luck, um, as you'll see when we look at the aircraft. Without further ado, let's go take a look at the airframe and I'll take you through some of the build process for TB1, test bed one. And before I go, I'd like to give a big shout out to Steven, who's helped me with the RDO Pilot software that I'll be putting on the Speedy B Wing flight controller. So thanks for all of your help, Steven. Let's go take a look at the airplane. Once I've got the aircraft laid out in CAD, I want to create a set of drawings I can use to print out and use as templates. So I start with the fuselage and then make some strategic cuts like so and then create a set of drawings of this profile. For example, here's the print for the template for the wing ribs. There's one inboard rib and one outboard rib. And then there's a set for the left wing and for the right wing. All I have is a little eight and a half by 11 inkjet printer. So I need to put some reference lines and tape smaller pieces together to get the full size template. I use this quilt basting spray that I got at the fabric store to attach the templates to the foam. It's a very lightweight glue that I can easily peel the templates off when I'm done and it doesn't leave a sticky mess. Then it's over to the vertical foam cutter to cut the parts out. One thing that I learned is that it's better to cut all the parts out before they're glued together. The foam cutter does not cut through or melt the urethane glue that I use to glue all the foam together. Cutting them in, out individually like this works really well. But once the parts are glued together, the wire cutter doesn't cut. And you almost have to use it like a saw to get through those sections with glue on them. I use the non-expanding Gorilla Urethane Glue. You use a little bit of water to activate it, and it takes a couple of hours to fully set. This styrofoam also sands very easily. You can get nice radiuses on your corners. The tail surfaces are even easier. I just take that foam board, lay a template on it, and cut it out with an X-Acto knife. And here I have the fuselage and tail section complete, and I've cut out the foam core blanks from the less dense polystyrene that, as I mentioned in the opening, did not work out too well. 
And here I'm mounting the wooden rib templates on the ends of the foam blank. I want to show you how I've put some washout in the wing. That is, the incidence of the root is greater than the wing incidence out at the wing tip. If you look at the way this rib is mounted, the center line is level. But if you look at the outboard wing rib, you'll notice that the trailing edge appears to be higher than the leading edge. This rib is mounted at one and a half degrees less incident. This ensures that the center section of the wing stalls before the wing out near the tip so we don't stall a wing tip and drop a wing in flight. And this is the bow foam cutter. Again we've got our nichrome wire there run through a couple of pivot points and a spring to keep it tight as it will stretch as it heats up. And there is our fuselage of test bed one. Next up will be to install all of these bits into the airframe and begin our testing phase. It's going to be great. Can't wait. I'm Greg. Thanks for visiting the project. Until next time, take care.